So welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at one of the tools I really like to use and that is animate.css. Now what animate.css is, is it's basically just a CSS file which has a load of pre-made uh, sort of styles for animating elements on your page. Just some really common ones that you might use over and over again so you don't have to keep on recoding them. Because one thing that gets quite repetitive in CSS is having to constantly remake all of your animations when they're all doing pretty much the same stuff. And this is one of the top tools that I would highly recommend you use in all of your projects. So to get started with animate.css, you just need to go ahead and download it from the website here, daneden.github.io forward slash animate.css. And just download that and drop it into your project folder. You might want to put it in your CSS folder, your assets folder. However you want to do it, just do it. It doesn't really matter. I have already put it in here and it's in the same root directory as where my index.html will be. So here I've got this animate.css file and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a test.html file which is where I'm just going to show you how this works exactly. So what I've done is I've just pasted in some very standard code here just to start us off. Uh, obviously you've just got your head tags, your body tags, all of that stuff. And I have in fact included this CSS file just using a link href animate.css and rel is style sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a div and I'm going to give it a class of just item and this is the sort of box that I'm going to animate and I'm just going to style this to give it just so we can actually see it so I give it a background color of red and I give it a width of 100 pixels height of 100 pixels and I'll give it a margin of 300 pixels auto zero auto and that will just center it and push it 300 pixels down so that is what I get right there just a nice red box in the middle of the page. So to apply animations to this, it's really simple. It couldn't be any easier, really. We're just going to add some more classes to this div. So whatever you have here doesn't really matter. This could be anything. This could be text, could be form elements, whatever you want. So what we're going to do here is add some more classes. So we're going to add animated. And you must add animated to all of your objects that you want to animate, obviously. Followed by the actual name of the animation we want to use. So for example, one of them is bounce. And these animations will run when you load the page by default. But we'll look at how we can do this with jQuery so that they can run as you want them as events. So as I say here, when we refresh, we get that animation. So that's the bounce animation. And you can look on this page here to see all of the possible animations. Just replace that with these texts. So uh, we can use bounce in down, bounce in down, like that. And there you get your animations. And obviously don't forget that CSS classes are in fact case sensitive. You can also adjust the timings for these animations. And that's really simple to do. So you just want to go into your styles and select that element. So here we've got the item, which is right here. And you want to add some properties. So these are vendor specific because the browsers can't make up their mind which standard to use. So for example, we've got the WebKit one, which is for Chrome. And I'm using Chrome, so I'll show you that one. You can also use the Internet Explorer, vendor prefixes, and then Mozilla ones, and there's a whole load of them. If you don't know about that, you can go and research that separately. I'm not really going to go into that now. But for example, WebKit, we're going to have animation dash duration. And this is in seconds, so by default, it's one second. And so we could change this to three seconds, for example. And then when we refresh, you can see that it takes forever to go down, that takes three seconds. You could also do something ridiculous, 100 seconds, but that will just bore your users to death. And we're not gonna sit here and wait for that because that would be ridiculous. But ideally, you kinda wanna stick with one second or quicker, depending on the use case. If it's traveling really far, then maybe you might want a slightly longer one. But one second is usually pretty good. We can also set the WebKit dash animation dash delay. And this does exactly what it says, is it delays the animation. So right now we're starting these animations when the page loads. We might want to give it two or three seconds to for the page to load before we use these animations. So we've got a duration of one second, delay of one second. And then we refresh that. And we've got to wait a couple of seconds and then it happens. So that actually looks quite good. One final thing we can do is we can set the number of times that this should happen. And this is known as the iteration count. So we can do WebKit dash animation dash iteration count 
and this is just literally like one, two, by default it's one, so we could do two, and we're gonna remove this delay because it's a bit long. So refresh that, and it happens once, and then it happens twice. And you can do this as many times as you want, including infinite, and this will just keep on happening forever, and I'm not gonna sit here and prove this to you. That's all good, but what about in the case where we want the user to do something, and then we animate it based on their action? So take this for example where we've got a form such as this one with a newsletter sign up and if the user doesn't enter anything in this box we need to validate that and shake this box or something to notify them that this needs your attention just to get their attention really just to show that there's a problem with this box that you need to fix. So we'll just shake it or perform any kind of animation that you want on that doesn't really matter you can use any of them that you like. So take this example here where we've got a newsletter sign up form if the user doesn't enter anything in this box, we want to shake the form and let them know that, hey, something needs your attention. You haven't filled out this form properly. You need to correct something. Just to sort of bring that to their attention, highlight it, that there's a problem here. So in this example, we'll just make the box shake or something, assuming that they've entered nothing in here. So we can do this using jQuery. And what we'll do is we will dynamically append that class, so that animation class, to this field. And then we need to actually remove that class afterwards once the animation is finished. So first let's dynamically add that animation. So of course you'll need to have jQuery in your file, you can just import it from the CDN or you can download the file, it doesn't really matter either way. Now don't worry about the uh, styles and everything I've got here, that's just to make it look nicer for you. The only important thing is that you've got this animate.css file in here and that you've got JavaScript, uh, sorry that you've got jQuery. Anything else you can use your own elements, it doesn't really matter. And what I've done here is I've got a div here, newsletter form, and inside of here I've got an input, which is the text input for the email address, and I've named it, I've given it an ID of email field, and the input submit has an ID of newsletter button, and that's what we're going to use to reference this in jQuery. So go ahead in the script, and we're going to select the button, so that we can run an event when the button is clicked. So we're going to select that button by its ID, so we'll do hash and then newsletter button, and then we'll do on, and we, the event is the click event, and then we'll create a function here, and then close out your function and put a semicolon. And inside of here is everything that we want to happen when that button is clicked. So what we're gonna do is we're going to now append a class to that email field with the ID of email field. So we're going to select the email field, so hash, email field, uh, don't forget this is case sensitive, dot add class, and then in brackets we're going to set the classes, so this is going to be animate, or sorry, animated, space, and then bounce. Let's use bounce for example to start with, and then close it off, and the mistake I made here is there shouldn't actually be a bracket there, this should all here be in brackets. So let's refresh that again, and we press the button, you can see it sort of jumps. A better one will probably be shake, although you can try through all of them. Shake might look better because that will shake it side to side. Now obviously we're not actually doing any validation here. You could if you want to put your own if statement to check if the box is empty, but however you want your functionality to be, you can do that yourself. This is just showing the animation. Now a problem that we have here is that I can't press it more than once. This only runs once the first time I click it, then I can't press it again. And the reason being is that the class, if I open the element inspector, so the problem that we have is that when we press this button, uh, so the form is here, and this is what we need to look at here, this line here. So when we press that button, the animated and shape classes are already in there. So let's refresh it, and you see there's only the text box class, which is for my styling. When I press the button, these two are appended on here, but they're never removed. So this just stays still and nothing happens after that because this isn't being added again. So what we need to do is we need to, once the animation has loaded and finished, we need to clear those classes. So we can do that and the documentation actually gives you a way of doing this. So if I pull up the documentation on GitHub and scroll down, he's written about how we can use it in jQuery. So you can detect when an animation ends and you can literally use this line here exactly. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to explain what this is doing. So just put this under that line right there, 
So what we need to do here is we need to select the correct element. So here we're going to select the email field, since that's the one that we need to remove it from. And then dot one, this essentially does the same thing as dot on, so it's checking for an event, except once it's happened once, it gets unbinded. You don't really need to worry about that too much, but dot one is what we're going to use here. And then the event, so when the animations end, the CSS fires out all of these events. Well, these are actually vendor prefixed events. So for example, there's WebKit here, which you might recognize from CSS. So WebKit is used on Chrome. Then you've got Moz and then MS used on Internet Explorer, O animation end and animation end. So we need to actually listen for each of these individual events because each browser can't make up their mind which one to use. That's essentially how it is. So we're gonna check for if one of these events happen, then we're gonna do something. And here's where we're gonna create a function like before and so here we need to remove those classes so we're going to go and select that email field again by its id so email field dot remove class and this will literally just remove the class just like when we appended it and here we need to type the classes to remove so it'll be animated as well as in this case we're using shake if you used a different animation here you need to put that here as well and then semicolon to close it off so now let's run that again press the button you can see we can do it multiple times now if we go into the element inspector we can see why this is happening so if we go into our body and then the div and we're watching this one here so watch when i press the button they get added and then once the animation finishes they get removed and you can see that happening repeatedly there so that's it for this video i'm going to leave it there that gives you a brief sort of insight into animations in css and how we can use some pre-made ones if you like this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.